Triple Borders! And today we'd like to welcome you to Mongolia! We are on a goal to travel to every country in the world and today is 120. Let's go! Welcome to Mongolia, where nomadic life thrives. Come along as we dive into the local culture, fun activities, and find out all that their capital city has to offer. Boarding a flight to Lombardar, Mongolia. This is going to be country. Country, how many girls? 120! We're getting into the 120s! We are getting there. We are getting yep. there. Soon we'll be able to say we've done them all. And hopefully we'll still have lots of energy to say that. Look at these seats just waiting for us. So my first impressions of the language here is that it's like a cross between Russian and Arabic in my head. Thank you. So how much sir? It's always nice when they have food on a plane and it smells so good. I'm so curious to see what the food's going to be like here. Look at this. The chicken one looks okay, but the beef with the potatoes looks even better. Yum, yum. What do you guys think? Ooh, this looks really good. Know. They give you even like a little salad. Seems like the people here are super friendly already. Usually taxis in most places are like, you know, out to get you. This taxi guy's like, I'm like, do you know where the SIM cards are? And he's walking us over to the SIM card place. Like, how nice is that? So the same guy who helped me just find the ATM is gonna take us downtown. And I just wanna show you what their money looks like. So this is what it looks like here. And um, the cost here, um, so we were just in Korea. Korea uh, is 40% more expensive than here so it'll be interesting to see like if we go to the markets and stuff like that what yeah, it's gonna definitely. be like so everyone's super friendly even the lady where we just got our sim card it took like a couple minutes but she was like mm, it's more safe to go with like an authority you know taxi but she says but I have seen that guy before and he takes a lot of tourists so she's like I think it's okay so here like you gotta question your safety right <laughs> like we just jump with whoever kind of approaches us but anyhow, so it's all good. Um, we're paying about 20,000 more than the going rate. She says you should only pay about 80,000 for whether it's one person or five people. It's all the same rate and you take it all within the same vehicle. We're all going, we're paying 20,000 more, which is only about five US more. So it's not a big deal, or maybe like six US more, something like that. This is what it looks like. It's warm right now, but uh, so it's like about 20 degrees. Beautiful day, and uh, I heard that it's going to go down to about eight degrees. Yay! So it's going to be quite cold. It's going to work. Oh, heavy, 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 yeah. heavy, 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 heavy duty, heavy duty. So there you can see the airport. It's quite small. Like it's such a small airport that so you can you come in. Yeah, look at the horses. I'm so excited to be here. The reason I'm so excited too is I just feel so, it feels so good to be out of a big city. We've been in a big city and I'm a small town girl, so. Well, we are staying in their capital city, Ulan but I know, but it's still small. It's like 1.5 yeah. million people live there, so it's yeah. still pretty small compared to, like comparative. And like within minutes, you're outside to this. Yeah. So this just feels. Got, like the desert surrounding us, feels the Gobi good. Desert. The Gobi Desert. When you think of Mongolia, you might think of this or of this. This is what some people come to see. And in this trip, we didn't have that much time to go see the beautiful scenery and the vastness of the country. So we stuck to Alambatar, but we still got to experience the Mongolian culture. So we just saw our first camel. What's amazing is like we come from a culture where everyone has a home, right? But then you come to so many countries around the world and everyone lives in apartments. Yeah. It's just like the concept of having a big home with a garage and a picket fence. It's just like not even a concept to so many countries. So we were told there's lots of traffic, but he was not joking. To go 
Nine kilometers is about one hour it's, drive. Yeah. We're yes. huge traffic here. Yeah. It's become blockage out here. Oh. So it's been about two and a half hours and we are finally arriving. Oh, let's go check into our home away from home for the next five nights. you on a room tour and show you where we are going to be staying. This is nice because we've never stayed at a Kapensky hotel before so this is our very first experience. It's a beautiful luxurious five-star resort right in the city center so here we are in Ulaanbaatar and we've got a nice spacious bed. We've got a really nice welcoming gift. They gave us some nice fruits, some little um, munchies here and you've got a nice TV workstation. This is great because tomorrow it's going to be just be like a chill day. We're going to enjoy the hotel, the property because they've got a spa, they've got a sauna, got even a sushi bar here, guys. Let's show you the bathroom. What I love about this bathroom and it surprised me is there's a really nice bathtub and look at it. They have like these beautiful travel sizes like products and I'm sure they smell so nice because it's bergamot. So there you have it. Now let's go see the girls room. Show me your room, girls. This is us girls' hangout room, what will be. Oh, look at your room. So it's very similar, but we've yeah. got very nice cozy beds here for all of us, for the three musketeers. Yeah. We also have a desk, which is great, because we need to catch up who's on gonna, school. Who's gonna hijack the desk? Most likely oh, Chloe, but we're probably gonna have to do shifts, you know? Be like, okay, now it's my turn. But you guys, school oh, you guys we got were given cookies. really nice cookies. Orange juice, which is really wow. nice after a long day of travel. That's nice to have some vitamin C, you know. Wow, nice. Yeah. And you got a letter too? We got a letter too. From the lady in yeah. red. Yeah. yeah. And you have a fancy toilet. Yep. Look at the. Wow. Okay, we gotta try these things out. I don't know what they all do, but that's you cool. Want... Yeah, I'm chilling in the girls' room and I'm mowing down on their yummy cookies. They are so good. Mm. Wait, did so you guys get cookies? Speaking of food, one of the things we're gonna do here is we're gonna learn how to make authentic Mongolian food in a yurt. What is a yurt? No, in a gur. It's called a gur. Mm -hmm. It's like a yurt, but it's a gur. That's what they call it here. And what is a gur? It's like their traditional homes. Mm -hmm. You're gonna see it. Wait up. Wait I think minute. we saw one when we were driving. Breakfast at the Kempensky Hotel was amazing. They had a huge variety of different cheese and meats, some warm foods. They even had freshly squeezed juices, some savory pastries, and real honeycomb. Well, good morning, good morning from beautiful Ulaanbaatar. This is day one for us here. So we had an amazing breakfast. That was awesome. And then we all went to work. So we just worked for the last few hours. And that's what's great about having a nice, spot where it's a nice desk, comfy chair, and fast internet. The girls are still there doing schoolwork and catching up, so that's cool. Tyler and I are on a walking tour. We're going to walk to the downtown, which is about 20, maybe 20 minute walk, about 2k away. And um, so far, I'm trying to like express how this feels to me, because you know, every time you go to a new country, you kind of like, oh, it's kind of like this, or oh, it's kind of like that. and. The best way to describe it, and please don't get upset with me saying this, but I feel like we're kind of like in a Russian country, but it's Mongolia. Like the buildings feel like I'm in, I don't know, like what I saw in Belarus or other places like that, or like very Eastern European kind of feel, you know, those big block buildings and stuff. Um, and so far all the people kind of have the certain Mongolian look, if you will, and they sound kind of like when they speak in English, they sound more like a Russian person, you know, speaking. So anyway, they've had a lot of them. Of course, they're in between like two massive strong nations, right? You got Russia and China, right? In, and they're right in the middle of it. So yeah, I'm sure they have influence on both, but they are still, I, you know, I, their identity is still like their own, right? So that's what hopefully we're going to discover over the next few days and share that with you guys. You often see these guys directing the traffic because they have a real traffic problem here. Check this out, they have all these street food, little trucks everywhere. Over in a distance it says, 
City of Nomads. That is so cool. This is like their big major square. I won't reveal too much because we're going to come and do a full walking tour with the girls so they'll better explain it. But as you can see, it is huge. So the big massive building behind me is basically like their par parliamental office, if you will. It's where all the things happen. Quick break in today's video to say a special thanks to our sponsor, TCP Global Solutions, AKA ourselves. Um, a lot of people say to us and write comments like, how do you guys continue traveling around the world and um, like continuously basically moving around? Well, we are digital nomads and a digital nomad means that you can work anywhere from home as long as you have an internet connection. And one of the things we do, and this is why I'm telling you, is we run a domain name registration company. And with that, if you need a domain name, if you don't know what a domain name is, it is anything www your domain, like your name.com or .se or .whatever you want, .tv. And so if you need a domain name, we strongly suggest you pause the video, go check out our link below and go get yourself set up with a domain name and it helps support our travels. So now that you know that, let's get back to a fun video. All right, we are about to enter the biggest shopping mall here in their country. Ooh, Anna, look at this, all the name brands. We also quickly jumped over to their local museum to learn a little bit more about their history before meeting back up with the girls. Mongolia is located northeast in between Russia and China and it is much colder up here. It is north. So right now it's about 7 degrees. It does have a lot of sun but yet you do need to have a jacket so make sure you bring that when you come with. They only have like a few weeks of summer which is pretty crazy. And we thought Canada was cold here. It can get up to minus 40 in the winter. And one of their delicacies <laughs> It's actually ice cream because in the winter they put it in a cardboard box and it stays cold because it's so cold outside. Something else, they don't follow many traffic rules and there's a lot of chaos with their traffic. Okay, so we are actually in the city of nomads. About one fourth of the entire population of Mongolia is actually nomads and they travel around with their stock, their herds of animals and they go based on the seasons. But recently, because of the cold hard winters, they're starting to abandon it and now starting to move into the cities where there's heating and such. So the Czech Republic is actually the ones that are teaching the Mongolian children the school systems about plastic and recycling, which is really interesting. All right, behind me is the ruler Kengis Kong, who in the year 1206 got the Mongol tribes to unite and forge a force, creating the largest empire in world history, essentially, from here in Mongolia. Ooh, yum, look at what we got. <laughs> Our next stop is to a spot called Zaizan Hill to get a great view. We had to cross this bridge and it was so cool because it was seafruit and as you were walking you saw a dinosaur below. It's a memorial statue for the World War II and uh, kind of the relationship to celebrate the relationship they had with the Soviets at the time. We'll be able to see the whole city below us from this viewpoint. Why are we doing this again? It's so windy! <laughs> I'm bringing so much and it's so cold. Breathe through your nose. I know, for some reason we're more out of breath than in more circumstances. I feel like I'm at a thousand meters or something and my breathing is like hard. Ah, but we made it to the top. We're like the only tourists here. Way over there in a the distance, I'm finding the very first, you know, large home with glass windows. Looks like two garages over up there on that hill. If not, everyone else lives like this in apartment buildings. Country 120 Mongolia. Guess what, you guys? Guess what? Guess what? 
Angelique's going to London. What do you mean? You got approved. You got approved? Let me just check my email. Hold up a minute. <laughs> okay, no, let me explain if I see first. You sure? Mm -hmm. I'm positive. Yes! I have been! Yeah. You've been accepted. Code of Classy is a coding camp run by a famous supermodel, Carly Kloss. It is only for girls and it runs in many U.S. states and now in London. We are right now going towards the black market. Now, when you think of black market, what do you think of? You think of like dark web, <laughs> secret, you bad. know, bad money, bad whatever. But this is just like the direct translation to the market, like black market. So we're going to go see what they have here. And uh, I think it's pretty big by the looks of it. This is all their storage units, actually, that we're walking by, so we're in the wrong spot. They were driving here, it's almost like India. There's no real rules, and you use your horn a lot. And I saw something crazy, is you'll see one car driving by, they'll be sitting on the left side. The next one, they'll be sitting on the right side, the left side. They don't have a proper steering wheel to match with the road. She's on this steering wheel, he's on the other side. Then he's on the other side, it's like this. this. My theory is, well it's not really a theory, it's probably accurate. I bet you China drives on the left and Russia drives on the right or the opposite. And because they get the cars from both countries then, it just goes match match. Let's go see what's inside. Ooh, look at this. I always love to find out what you could discover at these markets. There's always so many cool things. It's huge. It goes all the way down there, and then there's all these different alleyways. So which way are we going to go, girls? I'm going to let you guys guide. All right, take us on a tour. Why they stay warm. I would have like totally loved to have some of these in Canada growing up. to like so many markets right in many countries but this one I think is one of my favorites because they have so much selection it's just unreal yeah look at the purses I love this it's a Canada hat it's like a jean blue just like look at how stylish this is yeah it's like my hair they play cards as people browse their shops what does it feel about the Oh my gosh, this is unreal. Like I've never seen a market with all these horse saddles and everything. This is, I have a friend, she's into horses. This would be like her dream market. Can you believe it? Like I just can't believe it. It's just not like you see one stall. You see about like, I don't know, 30 stalls all full of beautiful horse saddles. And There's an expression that a Mongol without a horse is like a bird without wings. They have as many horses here in this country of Mongolia as there is people. They have like over 3 million horses. Personally, for me, I would love to find like a black leather purse. So I've decided on this lovely leather purse. It's going to be about 50,000 Mongolian. I'm absolutely frozen right now. I think you can't stop in this country. You got to always move. It's like Canada. You got to keep warm. And then if you move too fast and you get sweaty, then it's even worse because then you get cold. But uh, yeah, so this market is open every single day and then it uh, closes on Tuesdays. Can you imagine? And the lady said it stays open till about 8 p.m. So that's quite late. And it's open all winter. Imagine that. <laughs> Minus 40 and all. So we just walked from the hotel to meet up with mom and dad and we are now going shoe shopping. Yeah, Chloe hasn't been here yet and she's no, on my first time here. So I'm looking for new running shoes. So really yeah. nice. Those are cool. what do you think of the market so far? It's really big and it's got really good selection. Okay, so I'm a tall person, right? I'm like five foot nine, so shoe shopping is gonna be a little bit tricky here because in Mongolia they're a little bit shorter. And so, so far they don't have my size. So we're gonna see. Well, we just have to look around. Yeah. There's so many different oh. shoes. We'll just look up. In the end, I didn't find any shoes because none of them fit. I hope you guys liked that tour of the uh, beautiful market we just did. Now that we're all nice and hungry, we're gonna go have dinner at the KK Lounge. Let's go. This is a Mediterranean inspired restaurant yes. and the menu so far is looking so good. 
have a Bugatti and tomatoes. And this is a Mediterranean salad. This here is a Caesar salad. The salads are like big enough to like be its own meal. I thought they were like little appetizer sizes, but no, they're huge. For dinner, I had some green curry. I had a really yummy beef stroganoff. Ajali got some chicken cutlets. And Tyler got a yummy steak. The next morning we got up and went over to do a quick tour of this very special place. So we're right in the city of Ulaanbaatar and we're in a very important area. And what's interesting about this is similar to what we learned in other countries that we've traveled to is during the Soviet control, if you will, they kind of wanted to wipe out all religion, right? So um, a lot of the monks were imprisoned at the time. This was kind of all shut down, if you will. And so it's a huge uh, monastery right now. And a lot of monks, I think like a hundred people live here. So you can hear them chanting uh, if you come at certain times of the day. And it's a very special sacred place for them. Today is more of a home day here at the Kapensky and I'm actually going to go for a really nice relaxing massage in between my work. The massage was amazing and just as we were about to head out, yeah. we met with a world traveler. Yes. He's been to 180 countries. This is Avelino, am I saying it correctly? Avelino. Avelino. <laughs> and uh, it's just amazing because it's like so rare to meet someone traveling. We're here yeah. in Mongolia. And uh, it's just such a cool experience. To Beautiful experience. Meet a world traveler. Tell and you about every country and the ones you like and the ones you dislike and all those like funny stories and all between. Creating yeah. memories in Mongolia. <laughs> and they're giving me advice to countries that they've been to and I haven't. Yeah. 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 India's next for you, yeah? So we all decided yeah. to go hang out, enjoy some of the live music that was playing in the restaurant, and had some great conversations about travel. Up next, we're going to show you how some of the locals live and even try some of their traditional foods. Never in my life did I ever think I'd be cutting up a cow's heart. Thanks for watching and comment below where you're watching from. We'd love to know. See you in the next video.